Hundred percent. And when you truly do believe that, it's hard not to get yeah. defensive, right? Of course it is, yeah. Perhaps start in the middle and then work our way out. There is just some people that are so embedded in, inside an echo chamber from the compulsion side and the force free side that probably they've got the earmuffs and the blinkers on and they're never going to change. But there's harsh realities of dogs get put to sleep. Fucking shitloads of them week by week, like a lot. And it is fucking stressful and it's horrible to see. So the difficulty with the, the camps is I think we really, really need to come away from that more than anything and have these adult conversations that we're having now in terms of, I think it's just being more open to the idea that people use different methods has been a big one for me. It's quite cringy to look back at now, but I would slate anybody that wasn't on the same team. Yep. Because I'll be honest with you, in that camp a lot of time you are not necessarily taught to do it, but it's like a, it comes down to the labels and the, the definitions of things that people then argue about. I think because they're so caught up in hot headed arguments, they're not realizing a lot of these dog trainers, except for the ones that are purely in it for the cash, truly do believe that they're doing absolutely right by the dog. In this week's episode of Caffeine and Canines, I'm joined by Simon Moody, aka the Mutt Nut. Simon originates from a very different dog training background from myself. He actually started his dog training career training sled dogs in Norway. Since then, he's gone on to be a successful dog trainer who teaches in person and online. He worked at the Dogs Trust for many years and we had a very open discussion about different dog training ideologies and methods. I love this episode as it was a deep dive into dog training and behavior and I'm sure you will enjoy it as much as I did. How was your trip in, Simon? All right, mate, yeah. Where are you based? I'm based in Bury, so Manchester way, so about hour and 10 minutes is that where you've grown up yeah so pretty much yeah not really not really ventured out very to be honest moved around a little bit a couple of times lived in a few different places uh in the uk nothing majorly exciting had a brief stint in norway as well going back many many years and uh, that was back when i was dog sledding oh, nice. um but all in all yeah the exciting place that is bury manchester talk to us about the um, the dog sledding so it's going back a long time ago now to be fair that was 20 2011 and then 2013 as well, went back. How old um, were you then? So well, I was teeny tiny then. So I was like mm, 19, 20. And how old are you now? 30. Okay, same age as me. Yeah, so was, that was, without going into a huge story on that, yeah, that was based out in Norway uh, with an English guy. And in a nutshell, we were doing holidays is the easiest way to do it, but it was very bespoke. It wasn't commercial. It was very, you come, you experience it. A bit like going skiing, staying in a five-star chalet, but it was small groups. Um, we had up to 20 Greenland dogs and the idea being that people would come, I'd teach them how to sled nice. to, an, to an extent. But yep. we were primarily yeah, going out in the wilderness doing camping. It wasn't like some of these places where you see where it's like very commercial, you know, you're doing the same loop. This was like out in the wilderness. What's the cl what was the climate like? Uh, freezing. It was cold, yeah. It was like, I remember the first, because there's two times I went out, the first time I went out middle of winter and it was like minus 40 for like two weeks. And I was thinking, wow. And it, yeah, so it's cold, cold. We were sort of quite northern, more central, on the border of Sweden. So yeah, freezing, fucking freezing, absolutely freezing. Amazing yeah, experience. Huskies? So Greenland dogs. Where was that? I don't even know. So in terms of breed, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So to be honest, it was one of those. It was, I didn't know a great deal about it. Obviously, when I first came in, I did a lot of training in England, mainly on carts, and then we went out and did the real thing. Obviously, so Greenland dogs, literally just like a yeah. Husky type, Arctic dog, obviously from Greenland. The way I used to think of it was you have your, your Malamutes, which are like your lorries. Then you'd have your side, your Sibes, which are more like, I don't know, your standard car, sports car, if you like. And then yeah. your Greenlands is like your 4x4s. So typically oh, okay. the map, you, you, if you were pulling Malamutes, you might be, I don't know, your average speed might be six mile an hour, eight mile an hour, slower, but obviously you can pull a lot heavier and you can see where I'm going with it. Greenlands were yeah. somewhere in the middle. So yeah. they could, you could maybe do a bit more versatile, 40, 50 K in a day. Um, as opposed to Mali's Malamutes, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really. So that was the dog that we were using. Um, so yeah, it was my job in particular was I was on skis when we had guests. And again, we'd only have maybe up to six people. So it was very, it, as holidays go, it was fucking mint. Like yeah, in terms of if people came out, you had, it was the bollocks, I'll be honest with you. And like the cooking and everything, that side of it was part of my job as well. Nice. But my primarily, I was on cross country skis. There'd be there'd obviously a couple of us, somebody at the front, somebody at the back, obviously managing dogs. But yeah, primarily it was teaching people how to handle dogs, teaching people how to get dogs on sleds. Obviously the dogs would be trained. They, a lot of the time they're following a trail anyway, but they, yeah, would, yeah. they would understand cues. They'd understand lead pressure. Nice. But primarily the dogs were like 
they were well up for it, yeah. Is that particular breed of dog a breed of dog you would look at having in the future or no? No, 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 definitely not. For Why? me personally, like, again, there's always going to be a difference in opinion, like there is with everything. But for me personally, and again, you'll get some that break the mould, but Sib Siberian Huskies, they're just not something I, I, I wouldn't advise. Couldn't be but, further away from a pet dog, realistically. No, but I mean, there'll be people sat there now who are listening to this with a Husky sat at the feet going, <laughs> talking fucking bollocks, mate. So it, it's one of them where obviously there's going to be exceptions, completely understand that. But personally for me, if you're going to choose a dog, no. Again, having worked with them for you know good length of time out in the sticks doing what they do, yeah, they're... You're not years. You're not a dog that I would look to go to. Definitely. I not. suppose you've experienced firsthand the work ethic and tolerance that oh, mate, these dogs can it's do. And fucking mental. You're not replicating that with a no. three, four hour walk around the block, no, even are no. you? Obviously, that's the extreme. That's the extreme, if you like. That's mm. where, like, you know, that is the extreme. But having seen them in that environment and do what they're designed to do, let's be honest. Yeah, it's not something. Not a dog that I would typically go. Oh yeah, go and get one of them. And I think if you take a working breed of dog and you you dull it down and you dilute it to the point it can be the pet, it kind of defeats the purpose of that breed in the first place. So yeah. it's like when people try and calm down border collies so they can be pet dogs. I just don't see the point. Just pick a different dog. Yeah, pick a dog yeah. that's more suitable instead of going against the grain of what this dog was intended and originated to do. Totally. I think that's a huge topic, obviously, but I, I definitely agree. I think there's... And again, there's always going to be exceptions. There's always going to be that odd collie that is low drive and chilled and lazy bastard or spaniel or whatever. There's always going to be that. But I do talk, I, I do agree. And yeah, I know, I know exactly where you're coming from. With if that. I ever put a forewarning out there about a border collie or particularly a Malinois, and I might talk about mine and the work ethic and drive that they have, I always have three, four, five messages in my own personal inbox. Well, I've got one. It's fucking great with my grandkids. Okay. It sits around all day. I give it a 20-minute walk. Of course, there's going to be exceptions. There's exceptions to every breed and almost everything in life. Literally. Um, I think that's half the battle with just life in general, but certainly within dog training, there's obviously there's always going to be exceptions. Methodology, I'm sure we'll get onto breeds. You know, there's always going to be exceptions. That, that's just the, the way. But I think just having that adult approach to be like, yeah, get where they're coming from, know what they're saying. So, yeah, I would agree when it comes to things like that definitely so your first experience in sort of working dogs with was with sled dogs and then we fast forward to 2024 simon moody aka the mutt nut on instagram what does a day in the life look like for the mutt nut um so first of all i'm a solo entity there is nobody working for me as of yet uh, i previously dabbled with that in the past which it could change it could change again to be honest I mean, I'm, for, for what I do personal-wise, I'm, I'm a busy dude, like a lot of people. So there's a lot of other things outside of dog training, which do take a lot, lot of time, we'll be honest. Um, but the business itself, yeah, it's going good. It's been, last year was the biggest year. Hopefully, it's we've we've climbed and climbed and climbed, which is great. But in terms of day-to-day, -day, obviously, one-to-ones. Uh, I don't have a facility. Your facility is amazing. Love it. Um, don't have the facility as such. Again, something that, without well, going off on one, that's something that's been being re-looked at, definitely. Um, but primarily, yeah, one-to-ones, visiting people, have an online coaching service as well. Yep. That's something that, personally for me, I'm passionate about to an extent because I don't think it's for everybody. I think definitely one-to-one. -one. I think they both have they both play off each other nicely. So a lot of the time checking in with people online. I tend to target that just because I feel like I can, I can offer a lot more value and support, particularly with people who've got maybe more difficult and serious behaviours as opposed to your more day-to-day -day stuff where again one-to-one -one plays a huge part in what i do group stuff as well do i really really like to do a lot of group stuff as much as i'm a big fan of subscriptions courses i am keen to get people off the internet get people yeah. off the internet get them together community you know what i do on a sunday particularly the busiest day for the group stuff where we get reactive dog owners together or maybe not dogs that are reactive but dogs that need that that time working on engagement around conflicting and uh, distractions etc so it's not all reactivity stuff but yeah like i like i do like people to come off the internet a bit get off watching the courses which obviously again before people start slating they have the value 100 percent. but yeah getting people together getting a sense of community get the practical training in as well so yeah pretty much that's how it is i've seen a couple of dog trainers talk about how group classes and again we're a facility that does run group classes and i'll allude to the reasons as to why in a moment but i've seen a couple of dog trainers kind of almost slate group classes saying they don't replicate real life but for us offering a group class is able 
to charge people a little bit less and still pick on their handling skills, still pick on their timing of reinforcement, still pick on their management skills, whilst not them having to pay £100 for us to come to their house or whatever. So if I agree that it doesn't replicate real life because typically you get five minutes into a group class and you can simmer every dog down to the point that they're working quite well. But you throw them in a new environment, you might have to go through that process again, right? So how do you feel group classes benefit clients? So I totally agree. Um, just this morning doing one-to-one with somebody with my dog and they're two very, very reactive dogs. And yeah, you know what it's like. You get 10, 15 minutes into the session, the dogs are chilled. The reliability of that other dog is now very much within the dog's understanding. So yeah, they settle down and they rouse or drops. So I understand it doesn't necessarily replicate that real life, so to speak, but obviously there is an element to criteria building, building up the dog's expectation of certain things, building up the dog's skill set, of course, but also you can, depending on what it is that you're trying to do and the dogs that you've got, you can simulate certain things. So whether, for example, with those corner meets or anything where you can really put the dogs under a bit of pressure. So yes, obviously it's not like heading down the street and an awfully dog runs towards them, but yep. we'll do simulations of certain things. So we might have, if we've got a really reliable dog off the lead, we might have them charging towards a dog on the lead for a ball or whatever. Something where, again, we do this accordingly, that's appropriate. But what I'm saying is we can, we have the ability to be able to go, yeah, we know it's not real life, but we can really make this dog feel like they are under a certain element of pressure if that's the right, the right time. For me personally, I think there's, again come back to you saying with the group side of it you can really get, again value for money which let's be honest it's not not everything's about money but for me personally i think you can get so far with one-to-one -one courses this that and the other way you mm -hmm. understand the principle you understand the theory yeah and you tend to find that then the the jump from doing bits and bobs in your house or doing whatever and then all of a sudden there's a dog coming towards you with a reactive dog the jump's just too big i tend to find and people really struggle or they're having to pay out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds for one-to-ones yep. to use your dog or to use whoever whereas i think group setting you can really really make some solid progress forward you can manipulate it the environment in a certain way to then build criteria the dog builds a tolerance builds a threshold and so on and so forth so i i personally think it's invaluable and plus it also makes people realize they're not the only one yeah they can see other people they can learn off each yeah. other so I, th I think it's I think it's really really important and like I said I think courses and subscriptions obviously the way every business is going and yeah. I completely understand Someone's that. Someone's looking to isolate people, right? Yeah, and I just think I'm a bit old fashioned me in many ways and getting people. And I know you guys have a great community up here. I can I've, I've been up here several times, for seminars and courses and things like up here. You know, there's a real nice sense of community, and I think that's so important for dog, for dog owners. I come from a sporting background, so I always kind of wanted to have this place as if it was like a sport team with like a sense of f loyalty to the brand and but something that we can offer back and forth from our clients to our dogs to our staff and and making sure that our own dogs our staff dogs are as uh, as good as they possibly can be to kind of demonstrate that we can train dogs to a very high level but then also build that sense of community around it as a brand that doesn't exist outside of our clientele base but our clientele base almost exists within the brand. Um, and I've been toying with ideas to kind of trying to extend that in terms of, that's why we do the merchandise and things like that. It's not that, that we just want to flood everything with marketing. I want people that bring their dogs here to a Saturday and a Sunday to feel like they're part of Team YCA, if, if it wasn't for a better phrase. Um, I want to move on a little bit. Your follow come through to our Instagram page, Once Upon a Time, and... I will be honest in that I have consumed your content in the past and I've always thought that you spoke very well and you speak with a lot of sense. So I really wanted to extend the arm out to try and essentially hold a conversation with a dog trainer that might originate from a different methodology as our school here up in Yorkshire. We then obviously had a conversation and that didn't go exactly how I thought it was going to go. And your kind of the way you're looking at dog training and thinking about dog training has perhaps changed compared to how you trained last year or a couple of years ago. Is that something you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, look, this is a huge topic. I think, obviously, everybody knows in dog training there is a huge fallout. There is so much arguing, uh, so much silliness and daftness. And for me, it's something that I've really got tired of on both sides. And this, is, this podcast is not about slagging anybody off. This is about more than anything 
exactly as you said, trying to come together a bit, different backgrounds most definitely. But yeah, I think and it'd be cool, it'd be obviously cool to, to talk about that at an open and honest level and I'm sure there'll be certain things we don't agree on, certain things we definitely do agree on and but equally I, th I think that's just day to day life. Like it doesn't mean that and, it, and it, we have to because you think this and I think that therefore we have to go separate ways and slag each other off. Like I just think it needs this adult conversation needs to happen more and, and to make it clear obviously people who don't know me and I, a lot of people won't of course you know, I originate, to be honest, I originated going back in 2011 from a very, very compulsion based, um, very, uh, yeah, just very, very harsh. Yep. Um, very old school dominant theory. Uh, I, I'm not saying that's because that, that's rubbish. I'm just saying, you know where I'm coming from. The, the yep. whole keywords is what I'm picking up on there. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not, not the you know, principle of it, but so yeah, very, very heavy handed, literally heavy handed. And to be honest, it didn't last long. I had a really bad experience with that. Yep. And I was like, this is this is not fucking right. This is I got into here to to cause I like animals and yep. the experience of that train that I had at the time really sort of scarred me in that sense. So from there, so I did a full 360, 180, whatever. 180. Um 180, yeah. And um stumbled across IMDT. Yep. Like a lot of people do. Went through them. And like I say, I'll be honest with you, loved it, absolutely loved it, learnt tons, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff I still really like about them now. APDT, similar. So I yep. did a very much a 180 because I was like, this is clearly wrong. So, so this makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And yeah, that was, that's where my journey started. And then amongst that, I mean, I've worked for Guide Dogs, I've worked for Dogs Trust. Again, they don't really add up either in terms of they have difference in opinions. I think they're probably... From one another? Yeah, I'd say okay. so, yeah. Um, I think maybe more on the same page now. I don't know. I don't know. I've been out. I've not worked for dog, either of them for many, many years. But in terms of when I first started Guide Dogs, it was a bit more, I wouldn't say aversive as such, but they definitely used a lot more negative reinforcement than the likes of Dogs Trust. I've spent a lot of time, like I say, in Dogs Trust as well. Again, I know there's obviously lots of difference in opinion. Personally, for me, I love my time there. There's a lot of things I didn't agree with, a lot of things yep. I struggled with. Um, but it, all in all, met some great people absolutely loved it and for me personally yeah it was a massive learning experience but yeah as time goes on and life changes there's a lot of things along the way where you know my own learning has been challenged my own like everything i think and i think that's a healthy thing to do for personally for me whatever your belief system whatever you but i think you should personally you should be challenged because i think you can get so caught up in this is the way i do it this way yep. i've always done it not even dog training just anything in terms of i've always done this i've always done that and i think to grow on that me as an individual i am obsessed with growing in terms of personally, physically, I'm very, very active in many, many different principles and disciplines. But yeah, coming back to dog training, I think, you know, along the way, things have, have definitely, I've been swayed different ways. And for a lot of time, yeah, I was in that, as we know, these the camps that are the, the dog training industry, which I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into now. But but initially, yeah, I did a 180, very much force free, preaching it. Flag was well and truly in the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, not here to slag off any force free trainers. That's not what I want this to be about. But I think that the difficulty with the the camps is the camps being force free, balanced, and I don't know. Some people say there's a third one. I, I really don't know. But I think it's. I think we really, really need to come away from that more than anything, and have these adult conversations that we're having now in terms of understanding that people have different ideas, people use different methods, and understanding that you know we are going to have potential disagreements it doesn't mean that you can't learn something from them or you definitely will be able to learn something yep. uh, from somebody else that's doing the opposite so i think would i say that i've again you know where i'm at the minute i mean to be honest my my methods really haven't changed that much anyway i think it's i think it's just been more open to the idea that people use different methods has been a big one for me i was originally going back three years ago i would have fucking slated anybody i'll be honest with you i'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm man enough to say that i would you know and it's quite cringy to look back at now, but I would slate anybody that wasn't on the same team. Yep. Because I'll be honest with you, in that camp, a lot of time you are not necessarily taught to do it, but it's like a you're almost like I don't know, put I on think... a pedestal, I think. And I, and I think that's something that I look back and cringe a bit now. And I'll be honest and say that, but I just think, you know, there's it's, it's I've not really changed it's just more that the my mindset has changed to having conversations like this and understanding that people will work in 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 different ways and you know for a lot of the time there are so many similarities that's one thing I've come to learn is having speak, spoken to a few balanced balanced trainers again I hate that label I don't really like any of the labels which you can talk about but 
you know, there's so many similarities and people don't from these different camps don't actually tend to realize that yeah. you're so close to what you're doing anyway. Yep. Um, but again, it comes down to the labels and the, the definitions of things that people then argue about. I think because they're so caught up in hot headed arguments, they're not realizing one, the similarities that you've just mentioned Two, again, you've just alluded to that quite often their definitions of things are so different. They're, they're having a different argument to one yeah. another and both sides really do misinterpret the other side massively. Yeah. The, the balanced, again, we're doing the air quotes again, purely think that the force-free side are only just throwing food at a dog and hoping for the best. But I also understand that they talk a lot about management and not allowing the behavior to be re rehearsed, which is why what we're absolutely massive on here is if you can't fix it, just manage it. Don't allow it to be rehearsed. Don't put your dog in a position where they're going to have to receive an excessive amount of punishment or use a harsh form of negative reinforcement to compel the dog into a behavior you want. The pace is always set by the owner anyway, because of if you're not working at a pace that suits the owner, they're going to go to a different dog trainer regardless. So if you've got a force free trainer that's going to take X amount of time, let's say two, three months to get to a certain point, well, they're not, they've not signed a contract with you. They're going to leave and go to someone that's going to smash the dog's fucking head in for doing the unwanted behavior, right? So why don't we just work at the owner's pace, do right by the dog and try and address the issue with the owner in consideration because they're the one that's paying the dog trainer. They're the ones that's going to stick around and ultimately is their choice. So being able to kind of talk in a way that you can see both sides of the story is going to set any dog trainer up for success because you can say, right, dog trainer A might do it like this. Dog trainer B may do it like this. I'm going to give you an option C. How do they sound to you? Is that going to fit within a time frame that you need this issue sorted to stop your dog jumping up at your daughter and potentially giving her a bust nose to go into school with? How does that sound to you? And then working it through that way because of if that d dog owner goes through three, four five dog trainers and none prove effective because of we're not fitting the standard set again by the dog owner, they get rid of the dog. They put the dog down. So we kind of need to be a little bit more versatile on all aspects of things to making sure we're doing right by the dog. And again, the force free crowd purely think that any dog trainer that's using aversives are just squashing the dog into behaving and immediately go into that learned helplessness and shut down again which with for a lot of trainers that are open to using aversives is not the case. Don't get me wrong. I think that the conversation or argument or discussion that's being had between the both camps are often had by the polar opposite camps. The ones that are kind of just flying the flag high on the force free side of things, thinking aversives are always going to have some sort of ridiculous behavior or fallout. And again, that can happen. And maybe we can talk about the, the, negative and sometimes unwanted repercussions of poorly applied pressure and again the guys that are just squashing dogs into behavior and just taking a green dog and just absolutely canning them until they kind of just too scared to do anything so it looks like they're behaving are arguing with them and and there's again there's this wide spectrum <coughs> in between and until people in the middle of the spectrum start talking to each other and then working their way around out i don't think um I don't think any kind of progress is going to be made. And again, I think the, a big problem is that a lot of these dog trainers, except for the ones that are purely in it for the cash, truly do believe that they are doing absolutely right by the dog. 100%. And when you truly do believe that, it's hard not to get yeah. defensive, right? Of course it is, yeah. Because of every dog that comes through here, we I want to take in every single consideration. I want to take in the owner's lifestyle. I want to take in their circumstances. I want to take in the genetics of the dog and think, right, how can we get from this dog from A to B as swiftly, smoothly as possible and make sure that everyone's happy at the end and nothing unwanted happens to this dog in terms of he's not going to get passed around, he's not going to get put to sleep, etc., etc., right? Whilst considering the other person on the end of the lead, which is the owner, who always sets the pace they always set the pace. So, um, yeah, I think conversations do need to be had, but perhaps start in the middle and then work our way out. There is just some people that are so embedded in, inside an echo chamber from the compulsion side and the force-free side that probably they've got the earmuffs and the blinkers on and they're never going to change. But I don't see, I don't think them, them people see many dogs. 
because I think they get found out. They're going to be ill effective and they're going to be brutal with the dog. Yeah. And they're going to eventually be found out. So I think the, the, the guys that are floating around in the middle are the dog trainers that are popular at the moment and the dog trainers that are churning out lots of dogs. And these dog trainers also need to document it as well. And they also need to document the use of aversives. I know loads of, again, balanced dog trainers that are posting before and afters on social media, but they're not yeah, posting yeah, the yeah. aversive and it makes it look like a cowboy show. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It makes it look daft. You, if you're a balanced dog trainer, you have to post your methods because if you can show, I will show corrections. I will show a dog having a, a heavier correction on the e collar and say, look, this is momentary discomfort. However, we've now fulfilled this dog to the point that he can enjoy his life. He can experience lots of off lead freedom and it'll have a, a positive effect on his other behaviors because of his emotional needs and his biological needs are being met. To go through that momentary discomfort, it wasn't nice to see, it wasn't nice to document, but it is, it's there for you all. Okay, now you can make your choice. <clears throat> Totally, because yeah. of keeping it behind closed doors is I, I, not doing anyone any favours. I like to say I completely understand that. I, sp I think it helps because it comes from you in the sense of like, obviously my background is not in tools, um, but I can completely, from, coming from somebody like yourself in terms of, you know, granted we've, we've not known each other for a very long time, but and, on, and other people as well who, who are very much in the same sort of camp or whatever we're going to yep. use as yourself. I can completely understand that. In the, I completely respect where you're coming from. You know, the idea of, granted, it's not something I've done, but giving a dog that freedom to be able to be off lead every single walk because you have that element of, I don't know, e-collar, for example, which I know is a controversial topic and there'll be a lot of people who are going to send me death threats and Probably. DMs and all sorts, but it's, it's just an adult, honest conversation. If that dog, and again, I've worked in rescue for a long period of time in in regards to obviously from an employed basis and then as a consultant as well the last three four years um with rescue centers close to me granted yep. i'm not actually with anyone at the minute but i took a bit of time away but but yeah you know there's there's harsh realities of dogs get put to sleep fucking shit loads of them week by week like a lot and it is fucking stressful and it's horrible to see so and there is those ultimatums and stuff where you'll know it yourself where people say we're going to have to rearm the dog or we're going to have to rearm one of the fucking dogs or we're going to have to, you know, for one reason or another because, and again, you look at the dog's lifestyle and I know you talk about, about this a lot, the biological fulfilment of dogs and a lot of the time, aggressive and reactive dogs are on a fucking short lead, doing the same fucking walk, never off the lead. So the ability to be able to, again, rightly or wrongly, and some people say, we'll just use a long line, whatever, fine, maybe for one dogs, that's cool, that's fine, that's all the dog needs, whatever, but, you know, to, to then for somebody to come someone like yourself and they'll give you a load of shit or whatever because the dog's on an e-collar but then that dog's off lead for however long a day getting again they're now well more well rested there's a you know they're more decompressed they're more yep. whatever it is and this is what i mean this is the conversations that i think granted a lot of people might be listening oh i might not choose to do that fine but it's not this why do we have to have a scrap about it then do you know what i mean and i think that's where people are just so so stuck in that we've planted our flag and now i'm you know 12 feet under because this is the way that i've always trained and always talked about and mm -hmm. done on social media and i can't come out of it, it i have to sit in this parameter now and i have to blow the fucking trumpet because yep. this is what i'm about plus they also know they'll get a ton of shit which to be honest in the last two years i've got a ton of shit yeah yeah as i'm sure you have from different people but and i'll get a ton of shit from this i know I will but yep. it, it's it's just again the people get stuck in this well with part of this camp so we definitely definitely can't like i have people as i'm sure you do, have people messaging me because a client I put on Instagram on social media was using this kind of fucking harness. Yep. And once upon a time, that brand <laughs> fucking said someone to someone else. And it's like, <laughs> fuck me. Like, yeah. what are you, what planet are you on? Like, who gives a shit? We're yep. helping the, the dog. Politics the is do insane. It's just fucking stupid. And a lot of people that work with me, they'll know I'm straight down the middle. You know, I'm a very much a realist and I will be, I will say how it is. But ultimately, we're here to help dogs. We are here to, and if anybody isn't, then all right, fair enough. Like, you know, I understand the, the, there might be a place and a time to you know give someone a bit of shit but majority as you said is that people sort of hanging around in the middle and i've noticed a couple of people who've come up to you as well who i know maybe the force more the force three side who've been hanging around with i don't know i've seen a few people i thought all oh, right okay mm -hmm. you've commenting on stuff or yeah. been on a couple of seminars and that's good to see because it's like these yeah. are just mature people opening their minds a little bit and going yep yeah, probably won't do a lot of what they say but there's definitely things they're going to be learning or there's yeah. definitely things i might implement that i haven't previously done before and i think that's all to trying to get across is just 
let's just be a bit more adult about it. But there will be people who say this is unacceptable, it can never be done. You know, you can't learn anything from such and such because they promote this, that, and the other. And again, a lot of the stuff we're talking about, it's not stuff I do anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's not stuff not stuff that I've experienced doing, but it's it's being able to open your mind a little bit and understand the amount of dogs, for example, you must help. And I think the other thing as well is people will not realise that a lot of stuff you do doesn't even you don't even tools don't even come into it or do you know mm. what I mean? It, it, it's a lot of the time it will be, I'm sure, low, lower drive dogs or whatever, where it's like, yep, yeah, bit of this, bit of that. Introduce lead yep. pressure management, uh, management, yeah, and, and again people, but they just see meet the dog's needs, use yeah, the house exactly. line, literally, and and that's the thing. I think so many people, such as yourself, could have a sit down conversation and go, yeah, I do that, yeah, I do that. No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I would do that as well. And and it's again trying to maybe like you say work from. In the, the inside and out but I think there'll be there'll be certain people that you just yeah you can't but I think again it comes down to as you were saying before that ultimatum sometimes where it's like well this or the dog gets put to sleep so yeah and, and I'll be honest like when I've worked in rescue I've flooded loads of dogs because I think you know where we're at now the ultimatum is this or the dog gets put to sleep and that mm. has happened so I'll be honest yeah don't get me wrong if, it, if the setup was different I wouldn't have but again yeah. it comes to the point well I'm not going to stick to these rules because that's the, what I've been taught and I've watched the dog be put to sleep. Yep. My, well, I'm meant to be helping dogs at the end of the day. So I agree with in, in what you're saying in regards to, you know, a, a sharp prickliness in a certain moment yep. to give the dog a much, much bigger world. I completely understand where you're coming from with that. I want to talk briefly about stress. And now something that I didn't realise is you have another Instagram page called Pain for Purpose, right? <laughs> yeah. And I actually noticed this page, had a little look, gave you a follow on that, and and basically you're you're constantly putting yourself under physical stress, essentially, in a nutshell, right? In order to better yourself. Yep. So comparing that to what is the force-free mantra are almost completely counterintuitive to one another (laughs) because if I believe without, I will use the word pain as an umbrella term for discomfort, annoyance, something that we would rather avoid... Because without pain, there is no pleasure because of the marker of pain sets the baseline for pleasure, if you will, if you kind of understand what I'm saying here. Totally. So is the things that you do outside of dog training have an influence on perhaps how you've started viewing dog training a little bit differently? Yeah, I mean, I'd say I started viewing dog training differently the last three years. And again, it's not really changed that much. And this is where it comes back to the definitions, which we'll come back to in a second. But yeah, talking about things outside of dog training, please don't, I don't want anyone to think I'm egotistical in that sense, because I am definitely not in the sense of, I'm a person where it's like, I want to learn and be humble and learn from other people and, you know, a lot get as much information as I can from other people. But yeah, I mean, away from dog training, combat sport is a big part of my life. Yep. Um going to the gym cold water therapy that's before it became like a yeah, yeah, a yeah. proper like trend now that's something that I've I've been into for quite a long time now yep. funny enough that's where I met, met my girlfriend doing that um, but yeah it's and essentially the concept of cold water therapy is to put yourself in a high state of stress right so you can yeah, operate yeah. better in states of yeah. stress I and mean, then absolutely I mean I'm oh god I'm no expert on it at all it's just something that I was introduced to and thought this is actually pretty cool um, I know it's been around for a long, long time, and again, I, I don't know enough about it, and I'm not a scientist, and I don't have the data to back it up, but it's just something I enjoy doing. Yep. Something I enjoy doing, I personally feel the benefits from it. But yeah, coming back to the mentality, is that for me, again, not to go on too deep, but as a kid, very insecure, very underconfident, very, like I was a mute till I was about 18, 19. Mm-hmm. For me, I almost got to the point where I was like, I really want to toughen myself up, going back maybe like six, seven years ago, really wanted to toughen myself up, but yeah, putting myself in difficult situations. And cold water therapy is literally the bread and butter of that for me because it's horrible. It is horrible and it's something that I do most. It depends on when it is, to be fair. I am, I'm not going to lie, at the minute I've not been doing tons of it, but mainly because it's just, training schedule is just stupid at the minute. So it's, I don't have to do it in the morning. But yeah, essentially it's putting yourself in a horrible situation, working through it, breathing through it, coming out of it. I'm just building that threshold for certain things. But combat sports, again, getting punched in the face, that's... It's something that you can even dissect. When I first started, it was very aversive. I'll be honest. Yep. Like, don't get me wrong, the people were sound as anything, but very aversive. Like, I didn't yep. really have a skill set. And yep. this is what got me thinking about dog training because I got chucked in, effectively sparring pretty quick, and got mashed up like yep. bad. Like, no, my nose is broke, been broken several times. But 
nose was broke pretty quick. Yep. Couldn't breathe out my nose for yep. ages. Like I just got mad kicked in basically. Yep. Didn't have a skill set. Didn't, didn't have, have anything. Through the adequate learning. Phase so I was just before. basically flooded and had yep. nothing there. Literally nothing. And because I've always been a relatively big, biggish guy, it was just like, yeah, stick him in, hundred kilos, he'll be sound. Yep. Got my head kicked in. And then, you know, confidence severely dropped. And, you know, not again not having that skill set to be able to manage it, then stress kicks in. You can almost then go into a proper nerd fest of reactive dog, aggressive dog, this yep. and understanding the, the thresholds and triggers and stuff like that. Change it up a bit, fast forward a bit, completely stripped everything back. Mm-hmm. in terms of understanding the mechanics of what I needed to do yep. away from the ring away from sparring yep. away from high pressure areas away from adrenaline yep. ultimately yep. repetition 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 yep. strength of behaviour blah, blah 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 building confidence building, and then bang you know come up that learning curve of the criteria to a point where it's like okay this is fucking stressful but now to do this now to do that and then yep. that even that then you go into the quadrants negative reinforcement yep. positive punishment like and obviously positive reinforcement as well. Well, the, the fighting for me is the is the perfect. It's a perfect example of all the quadrant. four of the quadrants, yeah. And I just think that again, going back to force free training. Again, there's so many good force free trainers that I know. Don't get me wrong, there's some fucking shit ones as well, just yeah. like there is on the other side of the yeah, spectrum. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many good ones. But then I look at it and think, you're not force free though. Because you're, you're doing a really good job of exposing that dog to something that's stressful. Yeah, Person, yeah, yeah. dog, separation anxiety, whatever yep. it is. And I'm like, but they still flag, fly the flag of force free. And I'm like, but you're not. Negative reinforcement is almost always there. That's In fact, I mean. it's probably always, always there. Always I'd, I'd, there. I'd challenge every, anyone to find me an example of where negative for, reinforcement is not present. Mm. To relieve ourselves of, to eat some food and acquire food, there must be some negative reinforcement of gym. hunger or... or or at least the desire or craving to acquire that food. That's negative reinforcement. Even, like you said, going to the gym, like putting ourselves under physical pressure, or yourself, if you're going to the gym frequently, you might feel the negative reinforcement of not going to the gym. Like, yeah, you go and feel good after, but the negative reinforcement of, oh, I've missed a gym session, I feel a bit angsty and I don't like it. The negative yeah. reinforcement of that, even like um, someone then threw the example of sex. Okay, that's positive reinforcement. No, to relieve your sexual urges is negative reinforcement. Exactly, every yeah. every positive has a negative associated and you're a good trainer when you start understanding that, understanding the dog's drives yeah. and utilising that totally. in your favour a little bit. It's I, not always just hunger or lead pressure. Yeah, It can be... I, I think I think to jump in there as well, some people are going to be listening going, yeah, well, I don't fucking get in Cold War. I don't do combat sports. And that's cool. That's absolutely fine. Not everybody wants to do that. Mm-hmm. But then you could compare that to a high drive dog. I'd be a very high drive dog where yep. I need fucking outlets to do shit. Yep. Other people, just, they don't want to. That's, that's absolutely fine. And yeah, for the majority of those times, those dogs, they're going to be the easier dogs to train. They're going to be the easier dogs to fulfill. Which for me, literally yesterday, Mrs. was saying, you're a fucking nightmare because you just do not yeah. stop. You're fucking weird. Yeah. She said, literally said those words last night. We were at a track session because we we're training for a high rocks. And she's like, you are fucking weird. So what I'm saying is people listening at home, no, obviously. There's always going to be exceptions. There's always going to be differences. Not everybody's like me. Not everybody's like you. Not everybody, whatever. And the dogs are all different. That's cool. That's absolutely fine. But coming back to the the, the whole definition, so many great four three trainers. And in my opinion, again, I'm not professing to be the best dog trainer or the most you know educated dog trainer or anything like that for me i'm just i'm a pet dog trainer i work with everyday people people mm-hmm. that want better life for the dogs and for me personally it's i like it like any decent dog trainer you want to get better you yep. want to get into and for me i want to i do want to go down the dog sport route because i just think that's another conversation but what i'm getting at is for me i think i look at so many force three trainers i'm like you're really good at what you do but i don't see how you force free because the definition of what you're telling me yep. don't add up to the force free which but again you'll speak to different ones and it's like the definition is different yeah and then it's like well okay how how can we how can we argue this and if the your 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 saying is different to what you're saying and you're both having a scrap or you're having a scrap with that person yeah and and, and the meaning so, of the words and language you use I think are completely it, different. it's different and I think it's more people's attitudes to the dog I think that's what I understand where people are coming from when they say force three because it's like I don't want to put the dog under any unnecessarily or over the top or inappropriate pressure okay. But yep. but they're really good at what they do because they put that dog under pressure at the right moments at the right time. You mm-hmm. understand when to push and when to back off. Yeah. 
so to me that ain't force free and that's where I class myself it's like I know when to put pressure on yep. and back off yep. or you know I know that dog won't be able to take a lot so I'll take my time or that dog can take a lot or maybe we need to speed the process up because we've got an ultimatum of the dog might be put to sleep or yep. for me that I don't do that with tools but I put dogs under pressure 100% but you'll get some people in that camp going you're a fucking idiot because you're putting the dog under pressure yeah. but it, coming back to your first question then was we, we move forward with, with stress. Yeah, yeah. There's no adaptation occurs without some sort of stress because there would be no need, yeah. surely. If there's no stress and no difficulty and no, let's call it hardship, then nothing's going to adapt to overcome that hardship next time. So if we just constantly stay at like a pleasurable threshold, one, like our barometer for pleasure will eventually just become fucked. Like people who win the lottery, yeah, they get yeah, depressed yeah, yeah. because of, there's just no struggle in their yeah, life. Yeah, so yeah. there's no barometer for actual pleasure. And... And two, we're never dipping into stress, so therefore there's no need to adapt. When you put yourself in cold water and when you take yourself to the gym and when you might go into a difficult sparring session, the hardship gained from that session will cause some sort of adaptation, whether that's a conscious adaptation or subconscious adaptation. So the subconscious is my muscles will grow a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger to tolerate more intensity next time. And that's the subconscious, sorry. And then the conscious is going to be, oh, I got my head punched in with that guy's left jab so maybe i need to look at building my defense against the south pole's jab Mate, yeah. for example i think as well sorry to interrupt you that in that moment there forget dog training for a minute but negative reinforcement is so fucking reinforcing oh yeah i think it's so it can be so reinforcing if it wasn't reinforcing That's, we wouldn't do any oh it sounds like an obvious thing to say but like but people don't realize people that. don't realize that yeah if it wasn't reinforcing all of our contact sports would be touch sports instead yeah. we would play touch rugby and we would do like shadow boxing and um, what they call pattern work in yeah, martial yeah. arts. But no, it's the we enjoy. I play, I got a rugby league background. I played for like 15 years. I played professionally. I also played touch rugby, but I wouldn't play touch rugby over like the possibility of potentially like receiving some discomfort and a tackle because the reinforcement of dodging the tackle, dodging, swerving the punch, yeah, again, exactly, done yeah. jiu jitsu, like breaking the chokehold is very reinforcing potentially more so than positive reinforcement like the escaping of discomfort and as long as the dog's gone through the appropriate learning phase uh, like you should have before the sparring then we can actually especially when we train sport dogs teach them that that element of negative reinforcement whether it be with the e-collar or pinch collar or whatever can also increase motivation not always decrease motivation yeah. i get that now and that's something that previously i'd have just gone mate you're talking shit don't know what you're talking about and this is again coming back to that argument of i think personally for me like reason why you know it was very i was actually really um touched that sounds a bit dramatic but i was i was i was actually really pleased when you messaged going back several months now because i was for somebody that hasn't trained or been around people with tools it's something that i have wanted to come and experience and i have obviously been up here a few times now um and watch you guys you know with, with your psa club and that is just like fascinating um and obviously been up for a seminar with uh hands as well which again very fascinating a lot of stuff i thought probably not might not be quite for me yep. but literally majority of it was just like mate this is fucking sense, like yeah. this is this makes so much sense and granted it makes a difference that i haven't got a fire breathing malinois yeah i've got olive but in terms <laughs> of it, it it's yeah it's it's been really good to but what i'm saying is i feel like some people slag off other methods but they've never fucking done it yeah how can you how and, and that goes the other way as well yeah, yeah of course um a lot of balance training is slagging off four three stuff and i think hang on a minute have you done it have you been? so it, yeah. it works both ways and this is a neutral conversation i'm not here to slag anybody off i think we can learn from both sides not that i need to tell you that but you know, it's so for me coming up and immersing myself, maybe not even doing it, but immersing myself. Yep. And last visit here, we did a bit with each other with the e collar on, yeah, me e collar on you, and that yep. was that was interesting. That was really really interesting to to understand again where you're coming from, and yeah, it was just. And I think what I'm trying to say is, I don't see how you can slag something off and um, not have a clue how it works. Like I, I don't know how you can do. You can obviously, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see you haven't got a valid argument. It's like everybody in comment section in it really let's be honest they just depending on who it is and what it's about a lot of the time there's there's not a lot going on no. to back up the argument from a practical sense so but yeah no i think it's yeah i think it's just a, it's just an adult mature conversation there'll be disagreements there'll be agreements and i suppose you're in a bit of a 
st- sticky situation that I I am not jealous of because of obviously you've free- previously on a certain side of things. When I then went to look at your Instagram recently, I cottoned on straight away as to how you've like removed the label from how yeah. you're pushing yourself forward. So then when we spoke, I was kind of expecting, oh, okay, yeah, I, I can kind of see where this conversation is going. You've said to you by your own admission, you've had a couple of messages from people that, oh, um, mate, lol. and then conversely, you've reached out to a couple of balanced dog trainers that maybe have, have shunned yeah. you a little bit because of you've been, mate, so I get that. now you're slap bang in the middle and I won't call you a convert, but slap bang in the middle that may be open to using other methodology. You're in a difficult situation, I guess, because of the full screen out, ain't going to fucking want to know you oh, mate, for the I, most part. Yeah. Um, it depends. It depends because there's still some very, from that community, some very sensible people. Uh, yeah. There's some very very good trainers. Yeah, of course there'll be. Mate, I get shit from following. I get shit from following you. Yeah. Um, but there's other people as well. Um, not to necessarily call all these people out, but other people that I follow. Sometimes, yeah, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff they do. But sometimes I think for me that's like, well, challenge your belief and why yeah, you yeah. just. For, I, I don't know. It's getting a bit deep again. But for me personally, as an individual, I want to be the best version I can. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm, you know, physically. You know, that is a big passion of mine, but challenging your own beliefs might just be to go yeah i am right i know i am right but challenge it do you know what i mean if you just literally it's like again going back to a dog if a dog ain't exposed to anything different they're not gonna not gonna change so yeah i think they'll obviously and i'm i I get that but i you know there'll be a lot of people that watch this and go oh my god he's he's this he's that let's fucking you know there will be a lot of backlash Pitch folks out oh mate big style but i think there'll be a lot of mature people going you know what it's just a it's just a just a sound honest conversation yeah. it doesn't even mean like anything massively changes or such it's just it's just I don't see why people can't have more of a sit down conversation like this than just slagging each other off day in and day hammer, out hammer and, just, and tong I, re- I really don't think that's going to get us anywhere I, and they spend so much time doing it there's a yeah. lot more no, man, there's a lot I don't, of I gen- to spend your time it baffles I don't, me don't how, people, how they've got the time I do not know how people have got the time to, to have wars in comments and, and yeah I, I mean literally this morning Lay in bed and some cheeky bastard on TikTok. This isn't even dog related. Just fucking commenting saying how how shit my fucking hair is. <laughs> <laughs> what what about my fucking fringe? I thought you cheeky bastard. Oh but, mate, I've had it before. Like no coloured tattoos don't belong on any man. On a dog training video, like what? Oh mate, it's mad. People have too much time, but yeah, some cheeky bastard going on about my fringe <laughs> and just like. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's one of them. It, it comes with it, but I get I like I'm sure you do. Like everybody, everybody on social media, you just get shit. Anyway. They're usually people without a profile picture, no <laughs> oh, posts, mate, three yeah. followers, Literally. and you're just like you're not even a real person. No, no, no. You're sat there in your mum's basement. Totally. It's, so there is there is that. I mean, not to flip this round, but the question I was going to ask you was because it's something that I'm interested in, not to become the podcast host here, but in terms of sports dogs, then yeah. Talk to me about like use of tools in comparison to pet dogs. So know. with pet dogs, a lot of time we're better off reducing the dog's overall state of arousal and drive, and we almost want to, and I'll use this term carefully, kind of flatten the dog out. Like our rate of reinf- uh, we don't have to be too crazy in playing with reinforcement to get the dog like really hyper in performing behaviors, and we don't have to use much negative reinforcement to activate a dog into behaviors. We just want the dog to be nice and chilled and flat and then outside of that meet its needs and play with it to make sure it does have an outlet to like get his beans out if you will yeah with sport dogs it's almost complete opposite so we've recently just got three new puppies here lincoln gg and texas yeah, that are uh, eight weeks 10 weeks 15 weeks or wherever they might be now everything we're kind of doing with them to push forward as sport dogs is going to be about building drive building desire in behaviors now as a byproduct of that the dogs are going to be more drivey and, and want to give us, maybe we call it naughty. They're going to be a little bit more naughty and a little bit more pushy and might challenge the handlers a little bit. Uh, to a degree, you kind of want that in a uh, sport dog. So again, using negative reinforcement, um, we don't overlay that till like six months and beyond. Negative reinforcement in uh, motivationally, which you've now kind of been immersed to in the Nepo Po seminar, yeah. which is probably a conversation for a different day. And all about building little monsters to begin with which means like a little bit more rest time a little bit more crate time a little bit of quote-unquote 
deprivation um, to make sure that when they do come out, they're working really hard for food. They're working really hard for toys. And with pet dogs, what we want to be doing is uh, a little bit more satiation. So we're not building a dog that's maybe too drivey and a lot of passive management. Whereas the pet dog, uh, the sport dog stuff is um, a little bit opposite to begin with. Of course, there's going to be similarities because yeah, if all yeah, these yeah. dogs are going to still live pet lives. So we're going to make sure that they're not like absolute monsters that can't be lived with but when they're definitely doing this sports stuff we want to be building it's like we're building the engine and we want yeah, a yeah. v8 engine by the time that they're, they're a year old so and the other thing not to take over the podcast but i, I never think, get asked I, questions so ask as much as you want i, I think i think what, be, what i wanted to ask was because there'll be a lot of people sat at home maybe well i don't know people who maybe more of the i don't know i fucking hate using the labels because it doesn't make sense anyway i think when you say balance train it for me, balance is what what you do the most of, but do you know what I mean? Like, I yep. think it's a poor label to to, yep. to suggest anyway. But you get what I'm saying. More yep. of the forcefully approach will think, yeah, you know, a lot of balance trainers, they are, I think what surprised me a bit about you myself actually was, you know, how you handle your dog in around the house, you know, in terms of, how do I put it? You know, like old school ways, like no dog on the couch, no dog doing this, you know, dog is a robot. Yep. But I get that that is the opposite with you or it seems very Completely much like it. in terms of like me, when yeah. you go home i can imagine i don't know stark range or whatever just dicking about on so, the couch you chilling me do you know what i mean I, I i think a lot of people that 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 from speaking to a lot of people and being in that community a lot previously yep that's what people refer to a lot is oh you know robot dogs yeah and you know but as i, I can't I'm not really explain it very well but you know like the idea of the dog being on the couch or the idea of the dog being able to misbehave, so to speak, or yep. I, I don't know. I, and I just think I don't get that vibe of you at all. I think it's very much. No, I think you enjoy your dogs for what they are. Yeah, of course. And I think when people come to my house, um, they're very surprised at how they see my dogs behaving and they're just happy go lucky dogs. They're going to bark when the door goes. They're running around the garden, playing with each other. They're on the sofa. Most nights they're sleeping in my bed with me. Fucking when hell, Stark really? was. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. When Stark <laughs> was a bit younger. Um, a lot more management was taking place because he was going through training. Yeah, of course. But, and I might upset a couple of people saying this, but because of I have taught the dog what no means through aversion, if they step the line, I can say no and they will stop, which means that they can have more freedom and yeah, I need, yeah. need to use less management because I've got that power of, hey, knock it off. Yeah. Like, st stop fucking around. Stop jumping up at that person. Get off and, and yeah. go to your bed. Um, but for the most part, I'm... I don't see the point of having a dog. And of course, uh, behavioral cases need to, there's a little more passive management course, needed. Yeah, yeah. And, and when your dog's riddled with anxiety or experiencing aggression, especially in the house, resource garden, et cetera, et cetera, or you're trying to build a really good sport dog and you need to go through that kind of phase of a little bit regimented in adolescence. My dogs are now trained. They, they give me exactly what I need from them. They come back when they're called. They'll go on their bed when they're asked. But for the most part, I don't need to run a, a dictatorship yeah. around the house. Yeah, I think that's a key word. And again, you'll have seen my two older dogs. I probably brought out a PSA, like jumping on, like going yeah, yeah, in people's yeah. pockets yeah. And, and like begging for food and things like that. I'll share food off my plate and all the rest of it because of, for me, there's nothing I need to address or fix with them. So I let them yeah, be yeah. dogs. And, I think and I if I say no, don't do that. So, for example, the other day I took him for a walk around our big field and our big field is maybe like five, six acres. And I saw a deer in the trees. And, and again, my older dogs don't use any tools anymore. There's no long line on them. There's no e-collar on them or anything. And it's a private field. It's our field. It's contained. Uh, there's a, a couple of short walls that you, you could get over. And um, the deer shot out through past my dogs. I give them the big nope. They were like kind of frozen, like shit. No, we don't need to do that because of they've been through the aversion. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, any other dog that even was on a long line that is six meters away from the owner, and then a five meter long line, that dog is gone. And that deer went over the on, over the fence onto the road, and most dogs are going to be chasing that. And I'm totally comfortable with my dog understanding through a bit of discomfort what no means, but being able to live a life of being a normal dog. Yeah, yeah. And me and Kirky always say the same, like his dogs are exactly the same. They're, they're very rarely crated. My older two are never crated, stuck sometimes crated. They'll run around the house, like his house is, I call it like the fucking loony house. They're picking up crocs and like running around and chasing each other, bouncing off the sofas and stuff like that. But if he says, hey, knock it off, they're going to stop. And unfortunately, there needs to be a bit of 
consequence to be able to empower a handler to do that. And if you're if you're not prepared to offer that consequence, then you better be prepared to use more passive management and the stuff like, okay, have rules around the sofa and maybe yeah, have a yeah. house lead on the dog and things like that. Yeah. But for me, how I want my dogs to live is like dogs, like part of the family. My yeah. dogs are like my kids to me. I absolutely adore them, but that doesn't mean they're immune to rules yeah. and, and, and no, stuff. I, I no. love that. And I think that is, I've seen it with other trainers, more balanced maybe just through social media, which is not a 100% accurate representation, obviously, but where it's like, you can tell the vibes a bit like, Rightly or wrongly, that might be sound for them. Yep. Um, rightly or wrongly, where it's, you know, dog definitely not on the bed, dog not, you know. Yep. Uh, even jumping up and sitting like, I get it, but I think a lot of people, maybe of the force free side, will just instantly look at you and judge you and yep. be like, he'll definitely, like, walk through the door, every single door first. He won't let the dog on the bed. Yep. He'll, the dog will be created fucking 22 hours a day yep. and the, the dog will be scolded and locked out of the house. if you do, And I, it's like... That's the thing, again, I think people understanding more and having these conversations where it's like, you know, I'll be honest, like back in the day, like, um, like for example, with Olive, like she doesn't, she doesn't sleep in our bed. Yep. She sleeps on her bed. We can shut her downstairs. Yep. Previously couldn't do that. Like when we first got together, me and my girl, she's technically my girlfriend's dog. Previously, just the way that, that things had worked with them two, Olive's in the bed constantly, which for me, it's just not how I want to do it. Yep. Um, so we have it now where... She can be downstairs, she can be shut downstairs, she can sleep on her bed in our bed, and then typically in the morning, plonk on the bed, having yep. cuddles. I love it. It's like the best time of the day. I fucking love it. And she is a soft ass and in the sense of she's you know, she's not a high drive dog. Um so it's interesting because that for a lot of people is what they do. But I think yep. like me as a trainer going back a few years, I wouldn't have dared put that on Instagram. Because I just yeah, think okay. like people are gonna fucking judge you or people are gonna say this. And obviously previously I had a lot of heat from balance trainers or whatever as yep. well took a lot of shit from them more so when i was in that you know going back a few years so i think it's really interesting to hear you say that that's one thing i wanted to talk about because i think a lot of people will go fucking hell he does this and he does that but he has his dogs in the bed yep. like i was surprised when you said it then because i was thinking yeah 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 <laughs> so it's i think a lot it's, of people are. I, I think it's i think it's really good to people understand that yeah you know differences you use e collar or prong collar or whatever, but then also the dog's fucking tucked up in bed at night. The dog's got so much freedom. The dog's being a tit. The dog's grabbing stuff. The dog's jumping up, causing chaos. Like, it's just normal yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, Ranger at Christmas, like, jumped on the table and took some food. Like, and I was like, ah, he's being a dog. My fault. Yeah. yeah I wasn't yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to absolutely fucking come that's what down I mean. on him. And maybe some trainers would. I don't know. Maybe because they, I'm like, I, I don't know. But I think that's really, it's a really good point to talk about people who are just understanding that all oh, right okay maybe he's not like this and that yeah and uh, and again i'll just touch on sometimes management is necessary if you're not prepared to offer certain consequences or you want to use more motivation you can't satiate a dog with luxuries and then expect him to be really motivated to start working um but again if your dog's where you want them to be at you don't need yeah. to run that dictatorship yeah, yeah. all the time um as long as they've got the fundamentals there again like people are absolutely amazed when they see stark just running around and being a dog and like if you watched me of a, a week between me and my dogs just getting up and living together even if you were heavily against tools you'd be like there's no way those dogs haven't got really good lives amazing lives mm, yeah, 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 like yeah. they're off lead all the time they're very well disciplined and they'll come back when they're cold but there's not that time tyranny that we're running all the time and, mm. and it's, it's quite the opposite and um again most of the staff the same, same vibe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and i think that's is really uh, is really interesting and even like i say not that i won't compare myself to to certainly not olive and stark but in terms of even people say when i sometimes meet up with the dog and she's just on a flex and she's chilling yeah. don't get me wrong yeah. she if i need her to she's in heel and she's doing what she needs to do but yeah. i'm like i've got it not necessarily yeah, yeah. need it. No, you don't you know need what I mean? to constantly like, be flexing it all the time that your dog can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. In, in this, but behavior. don't get me wrong. I think there's an element of, of course, and I know this is not the big argument from one side to the other. Where it's like you never see any practical training. You just see someone talking to camera. Get that, understand that. But then also, it's you know, so there is a point of a practical training. Your dog, as a dog trainer, being able to fucking do the shit that you're teaching course, people and charging people course. for. Obviously, I totally understand that. But I think yeah, it's that you don't need to constantly be obsessed and it's not this fucking dictatorship so yeah i totally resonate with that i just want to ask kind of one final ish question where do you see 
yourself going in terms of your own personal dogs? What's the next dog for you? What do you want to do with that dog? Um, I mean, I've obviously previously had several dogs. A lot of the times, to be honest, I've always rescued. I've always, um, not that again, start nothing. I don't have an issue with people buying puppies. I'll definitely be getting a puppy at some point. Mm -hmm. But yeah, always, always previously rescued, always had staffies, to be honest. Yep. Um, so having Olive Spaniel is a nice new mix. Um, in terms of, for her, I mean, realistically, she's not going to probably want to work, I'll be honest. Like, I know my, I know where, um, you know, I know where that, as far as we can go. We, we spoke about this. She's probably a dog that was satiated with luxury and spoiled a little bit too early before she went through the training process. Definitely, yeah. Um, so which kills motivation, ultimately. So definitely. then when you want to get your dog to do Mate things, off, yeah. they're less likely to want to do things Defin because of they're like, hey, I've already won the lottery. Why, why are you expecting me to go to, go to work, 100%, right? And for anybody interested, yeah, so... Again, not to completely slag off broke me misses. Um but no, in terms of yeah, previously just been given everything because that was the mindset of I want to give the dog the best life, which a lot of people do. Do you know yep. what I mean? It makes it does make sense in that regard because we humanise everything and we go, Oh, the dog needs this, the dog needs that, the dog needs that. But yeah, given way too much, um, too much external reinforcement to everything. From food, from environment to dog to people yep. to everything. Yep. So yeah, it's very difficult then when I come in and it's like, right, this needs to change, this needs to change, this needs to change. To then all of a sudden she's just gonna think, well, you're a knob. Yep. You're a twat. Yep. Like I don't really want so I had to be careful obviously to begin with because I wanted to make sure that I had a good relationship. So yeah, obviously building motivation can be difficult. Um a lot of people out there have similar similar issues and Yeah, yeah. A lot you, of pet you, clients you, do. You have to tread carefully because again it's finding that balance of you know, using rewarding behavior you want, but also you're gonna have to restrict and manage to build value. I always say, yes. where, wherever there's yeah. scarcity, there's usually value. Yes, in birthdays, Christmas, holidays like th there's always an emotional attachment to something that is lacking in volume. So, been obviously trying to work that to then be able to, as you said, find that find that motivation to then be able to create behavior that I do want and get her engaged with me. Get her, whereas before, if it was just like, no, 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 yep. no, no. Yep. And she's yeah, she's gonna think I'm a twat. Yeah. So it has been tricky in terms of in that sense, building the motivation appropriately and correctly, which is quite a long can be quite I feel like can be quite long winded. Yep. Um but yeah, we're getting there. Definitely. So in terms of future dogs, definitely will be just not at the minute, just from a logistics point of view. We should be houses and moving and stuff like that. But ideally I don't know whether it'll be a Malinois, um, but I definitely would like a higher drive dog. Yep. Um whether it be I don't know whether it might just be good old Labrador, whether it yeah. might be, I don't know, Rottweiler, I don't know. But it's going to be something definitely higher drive than Olive. But uh, as, as lovely as she is, she's sound as anything and she's helped me a lot, bless her, with a lot of lot of other dogs. But yeah, and to throw another one in the mix, I'd, I'd, I've said this to you before, but I'm really keen to bring her up here. We're getting your classes. Yep. Just to, yeah, just to just to see what other people are doing. Learn off other people. Yeah. Maybe that's not for me. That definitely is for me or whatever just because I think it's a healthy thing to do. I think it's to be able to then nitpick and go, that looks mint. I'm definitely going to take a bit of that. Yep. Not sure that's for me or Olive, but maybe. So, yeah, I think I think that's what people... I think I do think we need more of it. I really, really do. And I know there's been, you know, other, other platforms that have had discussions with different opposed trainers and stuff like that, but I do think it needs to happen more, definitely. Yeah, but more conversations perhaps like this than... Uh just fucking slagging contests on Instagram, right? Because that yeah. convinces no one. No, no. There's no chance one of those commenters is going to turn around and go, do you know what? You're right. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to change how yeah, I think about dogs the now. Comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it never, it never works. So I no. don't bother replying. No. If you do get shit, I just don't bother replying. There's I will like no entertain point. it in a jokingly way. Yeah, yeah. um, just to just get a bit of traction there because I know how Instagram works, but... I very, very rarely, if ever, get into like a serious debate. I just say, look, I, I, I've talked, I've got thousands of hours of me talking about dogs online. Like, go and watch it there. If you still disagree, then we're probably not going to agree. Yeah. And I've offered people to come on for podcasts and things like this. People re very rarely want to then come and have this conversation. Yeah, yeah. It usually ends up in just. And, a... and it is difficult. Like I get it. Like previously, two, three years ago, not a fucking cat and else chance would I step foot in here. No way, because there was just that in that way inclined of. Well, this is science space. This is this and that. Yep. And let's not talk about that again. But you know, a lot of it is I totally agree with, and some of it I just think maybe not. But anyway, doesn't it, it, that? Does, I'm just very, very. I don't like being attached to labels. I haven't done for several years. For me, I do what I do because I feel like it works. But I am so open minded to how other people do it, taking things on board for me. But yeah, I agree. It's just 
yeah, you, it, it, going back to say a few years, I wouldn't have come here, but it's again just all being being open minded and just looking at things perspectively. Maybe again going back to what we talked about before, things away from dog training, they definitely had a Influence. more of an impact. And again, just to be clear, anyone listening, I'm not saying everybody has to start fucking cold water therapy and start scrapping. It could be anything that you're doing. It's actually you swung can do me in- the other way, whereas um probably since we've started speaking and we first kind of um started chatting and things i've started getting to the gym a bit but more testing my body a little bit more and i've actually started to see kind of how my brain works under stress a little bit i again i come from a sporting background but i let it all slide for, for probably a couple of years where i started working a bit and I, i've probably just eased up on the compulsion especially with, with my sport dog stark oh, okay. um and and trying to use a little bit more motivation and that's not me like Okay, I'm going to put the PVC pipe down. That's never, never something we've done. But I'm just kind of, okay, when he's in that state of fatigue, I've experienced this. Maybe we'll can the session here yeah, because yeah. he's not thinking right because I wouldn't be thinking right after I've done some shuttle runs with my PT or yeah, whatever. Exactly, so yeah, yeah. I think kind of testing our bodies can help us kind of with yeah. dogs and, and, and uh, swing us one of two ways or, or either or. I think, so. and again, that's the back and forth of this conversation. I take things from you. Maybe you take things from me. Like I think I really don't see what the big the big deal is. Yep. Um but yeah, no. It, it, going back a couple of years, I'd I'd have really struggled to come in here. Probably from an ego perspective, I'd have struggled. I'd have been insecure. I'd have been uncomfortable to come in. And you know, I've said from the first time I came up here, literally, everyone's been sound, very yeah. very welcoming, very very nice. Yeah, and I, I think you I mean? see people there's work bit, their dogs and how they feel about their dogs. You're, you're like, you're not someone that hates your dog. You exactly, fucking yeah. love that dog. Exactly, and I, and I think that's what I'm trying to get across here, and that's why. I wanted to come up when you invited me. I thought, yeah, this would be good because it's. I think it's bringing people together more. And at the end of the day, we're here for the dogs and the benefit of the dogs. And if we can, if people can learn off each other and then help other people more, whether that's they take this or they don't take that advice or they don't take these sort of whatever it is, then then that's what we're here for at the end of the day. Cool. I think we'll wrap it up on that though. Thank you very much for Thank joining you, us. You well. obviously come up a couple of times, and you're more than welcome to come up as much as you want. Train Definitely your dog. Right. Join in our group classes. Watch our sport club. If you see yourself with a Malinois in the future, then obviously that's something we can help with as well. See what happens. See what happens. <laughs> Speak to Olive. Yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks very much, Simon. You, Thanks, mate.